It took nine days, but the bear raid finally is starting to show some signs of life. We're here after day nine of fall camp. Here with me is BearTerritory.net publisher Ryan Gorsey. I'm Elliot Polikoff for Fox Sports Next, Scott.com. Ryan, big day for the offense today. Really, uh, Sonny Dyke said this was the best day that the offense has had between the quarterbacks, the running backs. Really, everybody finally clicked, and you can't discount the effect of the scrimmage on day eight. You saw all, you saw a few sacks, a lot of quarterback hurries, pocket collapsing on, on both Zach Klein and Jared Goff. And today, the reads were much quicker. The ball was coming out much quicker. The timing was better. The receivers, not as many drops, not as many miscues. There weren't those little things going wrong that kind of blow up a play. Very impressed with that. Zach Klein, in particular, you could see him getting the ball out quicker and basically making like he's under pressure all the time. There was a point in time where he hit three or four uh, passes in a row, five, six, seven yards, just marching his team down the field during 11-on-11s. 11 that was very impressive, and you really saw the potential, especially with his arm strength and how hard he can throw to get those timing routes down. Jared Goff not to be outdone. Really, the long ball was working well for him today, and the you know really the short underneath passes were working well for him, too. Not a whole lot of mistakes. A few underthrows, I think, and then Klein had a few overthrows, so really you had the two of them uh, make similar mistakes on, you know, on the opposite ends, but really Sonny Dyke said today was the sharpest practice and it's really hard to disagree there, particularly with those two quarterbacks, and it still really is, as well as Austin Hinder played on day 8 in the scrimmage, it is still very much a two-man race. It is still very much number 8 and number 16, Zach Klein and Jared Goff. My second big thing today, Brendan Bigelow, again, not a whole lot of carries. And really, we saw a few rusty spots, a few uh, a few spots during the scrimmage where he does really still need to work on a few things, particularly catching the ball out of the backfield. There are other running backs that are much more adept that Darren Irvin, Jeffrey Koprick for uh, two. But the guy who's really impressed me the most as far as catching the ball out of the backfield has been Daniel Lasco. Of course, he had that big 86-yard touchdown run in the scrimmage yesterday, and he continued to have a very strong day today, whether it was running to the outside, getting to the edge and turning the corner or whether it was catching the ball out of the backfield or, the, or blocking. Really, Daniel Lasko, I think, is going to be a very effective weapon getting as many carries potentially in a game as Brennan Bigelow. So that's going to be a really fun uh, duo to watch do their thing, particularly when they're both healthy and when they're both going well. So Daniel Lasko really is my big number two. He's been, and of course, appropriately enough, <laughs> number two. Uh, he's been fantastic, really. All all fall camp, really, I've noticed Daniel Lasko running low, running hard. He doesn't, even when there are no pads on, he doesn't seem to realize there are no pads on. He will go nose to nose with somebody. Of course, that's kind of scary considering what we saw on on Monday, uh, seeing what happened with Avery Sebastian. Luckily, of course, I know we're going to talk a little bit more about this in the defensive three big things. He's all right. He was at the facility today. Uh, no indications yet, at least officially, as to what the uh, the severity of it is. A lot of head and neck pain uh, from from reports I'm hearing. It sounds like a concussion. And hey, you know what? Thank goodness it's only a concussion. It could have been a lot worse. So uh, glad that he's back. And the other guy, the guy on the other side of that collision, Jeffrey Koprick, uh, he's he's doing he's doing okay. I mean, you forget there are two combatants in that, two cars that got into that wreck, and, and Koprick was doing fine, and he had a fantastic day, a really solid day as well. My number three thing, and again, appropriately enough, his jersey number is three. Maurice Harris uh, still catching with one hand. It's been now about a week and a half. Uh, it sounds like it's, uh, from what Sonny Dyke said, it sounds like it's kind of a minor fracture on a finger. And, and occasionally he, would, he, would, he was able to catch with two hands. He's been catching with two hands more often. But that still limits him. He can't get into the uh, the full 11-on-11s because, of course, you're going, you can't just one hand a ball in 11-on-11s and expect that practice rep to really be any kind of meaningful. So didn't uh, didn't get in there, and hopefully that what they're going to do is they're going to get more x-rays again tonight and see what it looks like tomorrow and hopefully maybe start getting him uh, b- to use both hands again. But for now, still that's one more guy that Cal does not have on the outside during the scrimmage. Of course, Bryce 
Lance Trace and Chris Harper were unavailable because they were studying for, for one of their summer school finals, so we didn't see them. And that really, you'd have to think that limits the offense because especially with their speed on the outside, yes, James Grissom and Steven Anderson did have nice days on Monday, but you know what? Without the breakaway speed, there were certain screens. You really felt the offense was a little bit limited. So not having Maurice Harris, really, you're not, you don't have your top three receivers. Granted, there are some other very talented receivers, but hey, not having not having numbers one, six, and three out there on the field definitely hurts the offense. So those are my three big things today. Uh, the quarterback battle, I think, as heated as it's ever been. Number two, Daniel Lasco really continuing his strong strong fall camp and number three Maurice Harris still a little bit limited and that uh, by extension limits the offense. When this offense plays up to its potential like it did today it is going to be a scary sight for Pac-12 defenses this year with BearTerritory.net publisher Ryan Gorsey, Elliot Polikoff here at Memorial Stadium after day nine of fall camp for Fox Sports Next and Scout.com.